This is going to be a very different video uh, compared to some others. Um, someone asked me the other day, have I ever built any amps or have I ever made any amps for myself or for sale? And the answer is I've made a, quite a few amps for sale and they're very, very good amps. I think I built an amplifier as well as anyone better than most. And, you know, it's not because I'm particularly a genius. It's just I have seen all the ways not to do it. And that at least of a relatively small area in which to work of all the things that do work that don't catch on fire that don't have reliability issues and yes i've built um, quite a few amps and they're all in service um i've had not not had the best luck getting them uh, bought um, hoping that with the increased popularity of this channel i will have some more business in that regard i would love to do more and more custom amps on that note um one-off amps can be very expensive. There are a lot of things I know how to do that are just not feasible in small numbers. Um, you know, having a custom chassis made uh, is extraordinarily expensive unless you're making more than 30, 50 of something. Having, uh, doing a one-off where I drill everything uh, in a blank chassis, you know, that adds a lot of labor. Um, people want AC 30s, you know, I'm capable of building one just like they did in 1963, but good luck getting a high quality chassis um, that allows the exact same methods. Putting aside the fact that the original chassis layout is not a particularly good one, and that's not really the method that I would use, um, you know, it just, there are a lot of limitations. So uh, for the most part, unless I um, were to have some kind financial benefactor giving me a huge investment to get started in production. Uh, my custom apps tend to use uh, chassis and cabinets which are already available off the shelf. Uh, I, I use chassis and uh, cabinets primarily from Mojo Tone. Uh, I, I have control of the cosmetics, I can customize things, I do my own front and rear panels and I don't use their kits, I just, you know, good quality chassis. I can choose the iron. I can control everything else. Um, and then a, a head cab based on their available options. So in this case, a client asked if I could build him, um, uh, just the EF 86 channel of an AC 15. Uh, he was knocked out by that 62 AC 15 I restored. And we spoke about it a bit and what he liked and what he really liked and what the options are. And I decided that I wanted to um, do an AC-15 platform that would allow me to build variations on the same basic circuit. Uh, in, in this client's case, he wanted the EF-86 channel. Uh, I'm putting in the normal channel as well because there is a, a spare triode available with the chassis. And so it's going to have EF86 channel, the normal channel, the, the tight switch for each channel, and then a, just a, a cut control for the output. And so very basic. And that's this one here. This is a rough layout of what the panel would be based on a, a JTM45 chassis I, I previously had from Mojo Tone. And I know that the dimensions of their JTM45 chassis are roughly similar to their 18 watt Marshall chassis, which is what I'll be using for this. And so I will do Vox-esque graphics without uh, trademark infringement. I, you know, there's that fine line between saying, hey, this is a stylistic nod to what it is versus ripping off someone's trademark and uh, their, their whole look. So this is going to, you know, obviously going to be Vox inspired, but I'm not going to be calling it anything uh, AC 15 plus or anything, I would get sued. Um, it's kind of a shame because my, my initials are LAC. So the LAC 15, uh, is not going to happen, not in terms of any Voxy thing, but, um, this will be a better quality AC 15 variant than anything that has been made, uh, since 1969, really. Um, on that note, between the 15 and the 30, I would love to do the 30 watt. Uh, getting a chassis that allows that is very difficult. That's where the expense goes through the roof, given what's on the market today that I can work with without having custom stuff done. 
But at the end of the day, the difference in output between the 15 and the 30 is not as great as people might think. Um, especially since the original with the EF86 channel, which would be the left one on this one, is very different from the AC15. Uh, most AC15s today are just a 15 watt version of the AC30. And that's what this one here is. More on that in a moment. Uh, anyway, I've, I've designed a board and chassis layout. The board is almost finalized once I get the chassis, which I've already ordered in to finalize those dimensions and where things are in relation to each other. And once I have the, uh, the uh, chassis, I will finalize all this stuff and do all the pretty graphics and show this in progress. So this is what the owner of this amp will be getting. An input, uh, two high and low gain inputs per channel, jumperable. The EF86 channel volume, a tight switch, which is what the EF86 uh, on the Vox uh, uh, original AC15 had. They had a rotary switch with a knob. It's much more cost effective and easier to see if you have a, an actual little two position switch. And then the normal channel, which will also have a tight switch, which will turn this into the either the normal channel or the brilliant channel of a non-top boost AC30. So this is just a little bonus channel. And then just a cut control. Someone could order the same app with a cut and a master volume or the cut and variable voltage, which is kind of like the, uh, the biggest, uh, the best level where you have full control over the output level without having any uh, uh, side effects. Then there's a very good post phase inverter master volume I can put in here, which is great, costs less than this. Or for those who want no attenuation whatsoever, just the, the cut. Uh, the board layout and everything will also allow me to do uh, a normal channel and uh, a tight switch on, on the normal channel. So you have the non-top boost brilliant channel as well from the uh, pre-63 AC30s, uh, 60 to 63, uh, the AC30 uh, six inputs. We're not doing the vibrato channel on these because that is a trebling of the amount of components and the complexity. And it's for a channel that most people don't really use. And you can get a Strymon Flint for much less than the cost difference between just the, the main channels incorporating that. Anyway, back to this. This version would be like a modern AC15 done correctly, which would have the top boost brilliant channel of the AC30, and the normal channel, which can also do the non-top boost brilliant channel and then cut by itself or cut with master volume or cut with the variable voltage. Power switch on the front. I've not shown an indicator light. This is the small version of my logo. Um, all this stuff will change as I get the layout exactly where I want it and then I do the graphics. But um, I've also been designing the board. Now this is the uh, EF86 normal board, and you can see that here. Let me zoom in a little bit. You can see the values for the most part on here. I'm not sure whether I want to hide any of that, but you know, it's really not so much what values because these are all Vox values. This stuff is is known. It is shared. It's how it's assembled, uh, the distance between components. I'll get back to that. Um, and the quality of the components. I'm not showing which parts I'm using. Um, but with this amp, I can, let me scroll down here, use the same board uh, for the, right here is the top boost normal version. Here's the EF86 uh, normal version. And so you'd on that, there'd be some unused eyelets, or rather, unused turrets rather. But it's much easier just to have a standard board that you populate slightly differently. And there's some further tweaks to this. This is not the final version, but this gets the point across. Um, notice that I have everything very spaced out. This tri these triodes, have a lot of space in between them, a lot of space here between this gain stage and this gain stage. Uh, lots of space. This reduces noise. This gives a lot of note clarity. I have the tone stack controls 
much closer to where the pots physically are, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, one of the jumper wires is hidden, but that's, that's, I'm sorry. I'm talking to myself. Now, one of the things you'll notice here is that I am using uh, turrets, but I am going to be using radial electrolytic capacitors mounted on their sides. Now, in this, these photos here of some previous apps that I have built, you will see that I have used axial FNTs, which are very traditional, and they're fantastic capacitors. However, the reality is that uh, electrolytic capacitors in axial form are being phased out because no one other industry really uses them. Um, and so I'm using radial capacitors mounted to turrets or eyelets in my builds going forward. And here are some uh, here's an image of an app done like that. A modern radial electrolytic capacitor is as high quality or higher quality in many cases than any axial or multi-section CAN capacitor ever made. So there is absolutely no downside um, to the sound performance longevity. And they can fairly easily be mounted to turrets or eyelets if you plan ahead and you know what you're doing. Because I don't want to design this thing with axial electrolytics and then in 15 years when it needs to be recapped, there is nothing on the market that fits and fugly cludges have to be used. I know that radial electrolytics are going to be where the industry is at for a long time to come and they will be available in 20 years, in 40 years. You know, this app should outlast me. Um, here you can see I have axials on the design and I may shorten the distance in turrets to accommodate a radial as well. Most radial uh, leads for a small 10, 22 nano, sorry, microfarad cap in electrolytic uh, radial would span that, but I might decrease this distance just to help that out in the future. That way this board could be populated with axials as you see here in the mock-up or with radials as you can see in this photo of an app done that way. Um, the issue there is if I shorten these, let me do that on this one where I can do it in real time. If I were to shorten this distance um, for this one, I would probably want to shorten this for neatness and then that 100 nanofarad cap doesn't fit as well. This is uh, an axial viche. I could go to a smaller Panasonic EQ ECQ there to make that work. Um, these are the things I, I'm gonna play around with. And um, this same span here with this picofarad cap, uh, that's a long span for a picofarad cap, uh, which had you know, a small ceramic disc, and um, it has very thin leads and that can move around a lot. So that might benefit from a shorter span, but then I have to be conscious of the distance from this eyelet to this eyelet. In this case, it wouldn't be a huge deal. This is a, a B plus for a node, and that DC is pretty pretty quiet stuff, and just still be three eighths of an inch. But these are the things I play around with. Um, so this is kind of my approach to doing this, and uh, the board. I don't think I've addressed this. Would not be a fiber board like you'd find in an old fender, which is prone to warpage and absorbing moisture, as I've shown in many fender videos. This would be a FR4 fiberglass board mounted uh, to the chassis on stainless steel standoffs. No plastic standoffs, thank you. Everything with uh, mounting hardware that, that has toothed or compression washers, very rock solid. Um, more to come on all this as this project comes closer, as I get the chassis in, as I go through the process of designing the actual graphics, and then having the panels made. Um, this will not look like it was done in someone's garage or on their kitchen table, though I am filming this at my kitchen table, thank you. Uh, you know, I want people to get a professional looking product and a product which more than sounds professional. I want it to be a jaw dropper. And uh, it's very frustrating that I have done that in the past and people are amazed but the word of mouth has been tr tricky to get out and I'm hoping that if I can bring this tonally fantastic uh, 
at a price point that makes it a reasonable choice for more players and the exposure with YouTube, then I might be able to sell people some really great sounding amps. Um, one more thing, because people will ask about it. In these photos of amps I've done in more in a Marshall and or Fender style here, they are not the Marshall or Fender layout because uh, Marshall and uh, was copying Fender's layout. Fender's layout was designed to be very easy to build and very easy to service, but not always the optimal layout in terms of where the components are. And so I have tweaked that to have shorter distances from tone stacks to the potentiometers, to have more separation between triodes, between gain stages, to eliminate crosstalk, to lower noise. I could do a whole separate video on grounding where all the grounds within a particular gain stage are grounded to the cathode of that stage. The cathodes of that stage are going to the negative of the filter cap for that stage. If a stage has more than one gain stage, those individual cathode uh, grounds would go to that same filter cap negative. Then either all the filter cap negatives are connected in sequence to a point at the input jack, aside from the uh, reservoir cap, but that's a long discussion. Or like a fender, each major stage's uh, filter cap negative would go to chassis in sequence from noisiest to quietest, uh, with the quietest one being connected by the input jack, using the chassis and, uh, for a uh, huge ground plane slash uh, connection. Yeah, it's like having the world's biggest bus wire. But if you do that, you have to be very careful about the sequence. And you don't want to have something from here going to here and something from here going to here or just treating ground as ground. But again, that's that's a, a deep subject and maybe I'll do something more on that in the future. But having done these kinds of ground changes to production marshals, you'd be amazed at how much you can reduce the noise floor and make improve the sound of the amp when you put in an intelligent uh, uh, ground scheme where you are aware of planning for and eliminating eddy currents and loops, etc., etc. I think I'll stop here for now because this is a long talking video. If anyone has made it this far, the code word is snow pants. I repeat, snow pants.